Today, I'm doing a test fire. <laughs> This is Dash, and I just finished doing maintenance on Debbie. I had an oil filter and fuel filter to change out. I did another top side oil filter or oil change. Uh, you guys have seen that video before. Also, added some of the DEF fluid. You guys have a couple of you guys have asked me if that car has the DEF fluid. It in fact does. But today, I figured it's still early enough. It's only about well, it is exactly four o'clock. I'm going to get a fire started in the new smoker. And uh, I'm going to see what it does. And then I actually pr uh, prepared, I brought, uh, bought some chicken legs. And what I'm going to do, oh, open that side first. What I'm going to do is put some chicken legs here, 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 here in the center and then on the edge. So what I'm trying to do is just discern how this um, smoker cooks. Every smoker is different. Every one of them, each one of them is gonna give you a different result. Kirk is already, the way that the heat and smoke come out here, you can see that line right there is where the heat and smoke come out of. I am going to see just how warm, like maybe from this side, the, you know, that rack there might be pretty much unusable because it's too much heat coming off of it and I'm going to see what it does. So maybe I'll have to, you know, no food here, no food here, but then up all the way across the top and then down on both those racks. But I don't know just yet. So what I'm going to do is test it. And if you've been around my channel, look at that light. If you've been around my channel long enough, you know that I always recommend anytime you get a new smoker, you start cooking chicken on it first because it's cheap and it's easy to uh, easy to cook. So I'm going to get the fire going and we'll see in about an hour or so if I decide to actually put some uh, chicken on the smoker or we might just watch and see what it does. Nonetheless, let's get it fired up. You have to part and it's like 90 degrees and the humidity is at like 100% and I'm playing with fire. No, no, no dub, I'm sweating. All right, so fire is in fact going and uh, I'm not going to load this thing like completely full. I just kind of want to see what it does. So I'm going to watch this for a couple minutes and uh, I'll check back in. All right, so for the sake of transparency, I actually moved the logs around shortly after I turned the camera off the last time and the fire went out. So usually, or pro tip, 
when you <laughs> when you get your logs set leave them alone because it'll go out if you don't i know that and it did still happens to the best of us but nonetheless the fire is rolling i just had the torch back in there and you can hear the um the moisture coming out of those logs that's there and i see the smoke is coming out pretty good in the back uh, you see it let's see from the smokestack all right so looks like she's off uh oh see this is this is no she's good there's still fire back there it's just not as uh it's not rolling as as hard as it was before but this that middle log is good and lit i can see it all the way from back here so again i'm gonna watch this and uh, check in in a bit all right so we're getting pretty smoky in here but i had someone ask me about um the rust inside of the smoker and what i told him was to get yourself some cooking spray i said pam this is just so happened to be what i had left out here it's a it says grilling spray and all you're going to do is spray the shelves down and you can see just like seasoning the cast iron skillet and this can is almost empty. I need to see about going to the house and getting another can. But as, whoa, whatever that was. But as the um, shelves heat up, again, this is gonna be just like seasoning a cast iron skillet. Uh, and of course, if I had more of it, then I could probably finish the rest of the shelves in here. But we're just gonna spray it down, let it heat up, and the rust will go away. Come on, come on. All right, you guys get the picture. All right, so as you guys can see, it went out again. Now, this wood that's in here is wet. It, uh, I, you know, we've been having a whole bunch of rain and it was sitting out. So it's you know proving a little more difficult to light. Now I am gonna I put more wood in here. I figure what the heck. Um, I, I just really want. I'm interested to see what this thing will do. And I can't see what it'll do until I get the fire going. So we're gonna get a rager in here. And I'm just gonna let it go and see what happens. But I'm gonna leave this torch burning in here for a good, I don't know, five, 10 minutes or so. I want this wood good and lit. You might also be asking yourself, where's the charcoal basket? I'm gonna be working on a charcoal basket for this smoker, similar as to how I made the charcoal basket for Vicky. So we're gonna get this lit in a couple different places. No one said it before, but she's lit. Mm. All right, I'm gonna close the door. We're gonna watch this thing and see what happens. Oh, what fun. Oh, what fun. Time to learn a new smoker. So now one of the things I didn't do, see how fast we're rolling here? and the thermometer on the other side. Now one of the things what I was just about to say was one of the things I did not do was I did not add any water. I wanted to get the, get the smoker rolling first. So, wow. She's rolling. The fire's good and going. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna let her eat right now. Him, her, it, I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna let it eat. Let's see what this fire looks like. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, buddy. It's lit. First fire in the new smoker. I'll take it. So I can tell you guys that it is definitely warm inside of the smoker. And you see that the, uh, the spray that I put in there once it got warmed up, all of that rust on the shells is pretty much gone away. Um, now the rust down in the water pan there, that is definitely from the, uh, the exhaust is open. So when it rained, it got some water down in there, but it's, it'll be fine. Once I get cooking in here and the oils from the food that I'm cooking and other things like that get in here, it will, uh, it'll, like I said, it'll be fine. You see there's moisture. The metal is sweating. Once you heat it up, all of that moisture that was inside of the, of the uh, metal is starting to come out. I'm just going to let it, let it do what it does. And we're going to see what's going on. I love those positive closure latches. But I'm standing back and I'm just observing for right now. Like I said, I'm going to let it eat. Firebox is full. I think I showed you the fire down in here. Let me just double check. Oh yeah. Woo! Man. I'm gonna let it go for another couple minutes unchecked and then I might add some water to the water pan and we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay, so we can see, maybe you can hear. I put some water in the pan. I didn't fill the water pan all the way up, but I did put some water into the pan. And on the left side, we're rolling at 300. On the right side, we're just shy of 250. Now, I did slow down the intake, basically. So when I start, when I start looking at this, and maybe here you can see, there's diamonds in the uh, expanded steel there. I have them, uh, two diamonds or open to two diamonds so we shall see now what's crazy is i see a bunch of ants on this thing huh that's interesting I'm sure as heck hope they weren't in his hut oh well uh, and if you guys get ants in your firewood I know I've had somebody ask me, what do I do about ants in my firewood? They burn. <laughs> that, that was my answer. So it uh, doesn't bother me none when ants get into the firewood, uh, just as long as they're not fire ants. But so far, we're seeing what this thing is gonna do. All right, so <clears throat> now we're at 275 on this side and to almost 250 on this side. I can deal with that little bit of variance. Now, let me show you what I did to get that. I found a piece of plate that I had in the corner. This is really thin metal, and I put it up and over the uh, grate, I mean the, uh, the heat where it comes in to try and help drive some of the heat this way. Now, what I think I might have to do is maybe cut it off halfway and we'll see what that does but work in progress definitely work in progress the heat is coming over here which is why this side is boiling and uh, I haven't looked in the firebox recently but as you can hear hopefully the uh, water is rolling So uh, it's about 6.15, just in case anybody wanted to uh, know how long it's been. And let me sit down. Uh, so we're still rolling in there. Woo. So Kirk put a new gasket around here and it is a tight, <laughs> well, excuse me, a positive tight closure. Uh, he said basically the uh, gasket will not break down but wear in over time and it'll be easier to close and open 
And this, you know, fresh coat of paint that he put on the handle is making things stick. So, so far, so far so good. Uh, as far as the temperatures, I'm just gonna watch it. Just gonna watch it, see what it does, and uh, keep watching and making finite adjustments. And uh, I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. All right, so it's 6.30, and um, I am about to add a stick, I guess. But I wanted to show you guys the little tuning plate I put in there, 275, and we're at 250 right there. I like those temperatures, I like that. So, so of course, I'm sure the temperature is probably a little warmer right down and around where that plate is coming out at the bottom, uh, but, that looks good right there. 25 degree difference from one side to the other on that uh, second shelf. I'm cool with that. So, unfortunately, it's uh, getting a little late and I'm not gonna be able to cook anything in there tonight. But, so far, so good. Um, I think I'm, I'm happy with these results. I'm gonna add, some, uh, add a stick of wood and see what happens. Gonna go in the house, probably get some dinner started, and just kinda keep watching it to see what it does. Might be able to come back out here a little later and fiddle with it some more. But at least putting that little plate down at the bottom, that's a proof of concept as to how to help regulate the heat across the smoker. I am excited that it was that easy. All right, so fast forward a couple days, uh, I realized well, I didn't realize, but I was unable to get back out into the garage on, when I filmed that last video, it was actually Sunday. I was unable to get back out to the garage on Sunday. So I never closed out the video and I never gave you my thoughts on the smoker as is. So, uh, let me try and get you set up here. Uh, I think as, as every new smoker, there are gonna be some issues. I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to even out the heat inside of the smoker. Uh, right now, because of the fact that the insulation is, is done as well as it is, uh, in order for me to be able to get everything usable from you know this side down low to this side up, up, up high, I'm gonna to need to be able to even out the heat. Uh, I came close to doing that, or being able to even out the heat by putting in that little piece of metal that I was able to put in there, but I need to get a better solution than that. Um, in Priscilla, where the heat and smoke come up, there is a, uh, not a plate, but there is a, uh, I'm trying to think what, I guess it's like a little baffle, and it, the opening where the heat and smoke come in, it actually kind of carries around and under a, uh, like I said, it's, it's a plate, it's, it's six inches wide maybe, and maybe 18, 20 inches long. And that seems to, I have yet to put a fire through Priscilla, uh, but that seems to be, I won't say the answer, but a key to trying to help even out the heat and the smoke, at least in that particular uh, device. But I have not, uh, I have not been able to put another fire through through the smoker just yet. Freaking life, man! My <laughs> kids doing baseball, kids, you know, having three kids, working a full time job, and and all of the like. Uh, I'm pretty busy. So, nonetheless, I am. By the time you guys are seeing this, I'm actually going to be on a uh, headed out, headed up to Cape Cod to go on a fishing trip. I probably will not be doing a live stream on Wednesday. Again, you'll probably see this on Thursday morning. So I probably did not do a live stream last night. If I did do a live stream, it was just for a few minutes to kind of tell you guys I'm not doing a live stream because I'll most likely be traveling to link up with my father-in-law so that we can then uh, head up to uh, Cape Cod. So if any of you guys are in the you know, Cape Cod area or I think we're, we'll be in uh, Yarmouth, that Hyannis, Yarmouth area. But if you guys are in that area, hit me up, find my number. <laughs> All right. But 
nonetheless, I have my work cut out. Bessie seems to be, or Bessie seems to be the only smoker so far that um, I didn't have to really tweak or do much of anything with. Bessie spoiled me. Vicky, you guys, uh, some of you guys who have been around for a while and you see Vicky kind of hiding over there. Vicky gave me the blues. That's why she got her name Vicky. Uh, Vicky gave me the blues when I first got her. Um, ended up having to take take Vicky back down to Kirk's house. He made some modifications. And I still am not able to run a clean burning fire through Vicky. Or at least I haven't been patient enough maybe to, to get a good fire going in Vicky. But nonetheless, this the new smoker here rang clean. There was no issues with the wood burning fire. The only issue I had was that the heat and the smoke that were coming from here were way too intense. And that's a byproduct of the fact that it's a, uh, it's insulated. That, that, there's not, nothing I can do about that. So what I have to do is once the heat and the smoke come into the smoker from down in this area, I have to baffle or I have to do something, figure something out in order to uh, dissipate or you know disperse the heat a little more evenly so that the cook chamber can be heated a little more evenly. So like I said, I have my work cut out for me. Um, you guys know I'm pretty transparent with you guys. As I do different things to this, as I do actually cook things on this, I will keep you guys posted and let you guys know. But nonetheless, Thank you guys so very much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this journey as I embark on a new toy, a new device, a new cooking apparatus. Um, nonetheless, again, thank you guys so very much for your, your positive feedback for the video where I brought this home. All of your encouragement, all of your excitement aside from my excitement, I really, I feed off of that. And it, it bums me when I can't actually use stuff in order to make videos. You making videos for the big green egg was rather easy for me because I'm I have an excuse to make content with the big green egg because I'm just cooking dinner. This thing uh, is gonna take a lot more attention uh, because I don't know how it works just yet, and it's a little different for me or a little a lot harder for me to come out to the garage, especially during the week when I still have to get up early in the morning to go to work and spend you know, five to eight hours out here just sitting watching this thing work. So I say all of that to say, be patient with me. I'm going on this fishing trip and I probably won't be able to cook anything on this until next week. Um, and that means that if I cook something on the next week, you might not see a video on it for another two. Just preparing. And I'm really out this time. I'll see you guys soon.